it's time to take and get our Mennonite sorghum harvested. So as you can see behind me, our uh, sorghum patch, our Mennonite sorghum, is starting to get to that point that it needs to be harvested. Now, in 2021, it was sort of the first year we actually grew this, and the first year we actually processed this into syrup. So we're hoping for a pretty good uh, yield, I guess, this year. We have a little bit larger patch. Uh, it's kind of an odd shape but we definitely have more stocks than we did in 2021 so we're gonna basically get right into this get these stocks cut down and uh, get them over for uh, further processing this gives a little better idea on the size of our stand as i say it's not huge we had hoped to plant a little bit more of this in uh, 2022 but uh, we had some sort of issues with germination and uh, this is what we ended up with the geese have already stripped the lower leaves, which is basically fine because they don't have any of the uh, syrup in them or the sugar in them. You can see because we're a little earlier than we were in 2021, these are still quite green and they're still, uh, still quite hard, but I'm hoping they have a little bit more uh, in them than last year, although we were pleasantly surprised. And this is a deceiving, I guess, vantage point, but these are tall plants. You can see all the seed heads up there. Some of these are ripe, some of them are not. We're going to pick through some of the more ripe ones and uh, sort of get some seed for next year. We haven't really had a hard frost yet, which is good. So hopefully these will still be quite viable. So to cut these, we just basically use a pair of uh, pruning shears because they are a little tough. You could do it with uh, handheld ones if you wanted, but I just find this is a little easier. Well, as you can see behind me, I've basically demolished our uh, sorghum patch in pretty short order. I think it took me maybe somewhere between five and 10 minutes and they're all down. So I will show you uh, what we ended up with. And there is our pile. So of course, at this point, it doesn't look like much. I have a feeling I'm going to have to carry this in two batches. Another load of sorghum heading to the chipper. I think at this point, this is a good time to sort of, at least from my opinion, talk about the fact that I think this is one of these underrated or completely forgotten sort of quote unquote survival type crops. Because on a small scale, nobody thinks of growing it. But you actually can get three products out of these uh, syrup type sorghums. You can get the grains, which uh, that's my next task is to. Uh, harvest the grains off of all these before we uh, process them further. You get the syrup, which uh, is pretty handy. Now we live in an area where this is not a plant that's ever really been grown in any sort of manner, uh, commercial or otherwise, but uh, it still does good even here in Ontario. And uh, you also, if you have livestock, by the time you're done the uh, extraction process, the pressing on a small scale again, because there are more, uh, uh, what would you say? There, there are better methods for large-scale production to extract the, uh, the liquid out of these plants. But on a small scale, you end up with basically a fodder item in the uh, chipped, chipped up uh, pieces. Honestly, this is a pretty problem-free plant. It doesn't seem to have a lot of pests. It's fairly drought tolerant. It's fairly productive. And I honestly don't know why, because you can grow quite a few in a fairly small space. More people don't grow it uh, or consider it, aside from the fact that it's just alien to them. They're not, uh, they've never been exposed to it and have never really thought about it before. Speaking of uses, the next part, I'm going to go along and chop off all these seed heads. Well, the next step in this process is to take those stalks behind me and uh, run them through our little yard chipper, because that will turn them into sorghum or sor sorghum chips that we can then run through our press to get these basically the juice out of them you've seen this featured in many other videos it's just a small little chipper but when it comes to processing some of these i'm going to say kind of alternative or forgotten things like the sorghum or even the apples that we uh, run a lot through this it's basically invaluable because it allows us to turn these stalks which otherwise 
there's really very little we could do without a, a much more substantial press into something usable. So we've run through a few and we're just going to show you what this looks like when it comes out the other end. It basically looks like a bunch of dry green chips. And so we're going to put this in our apple press and uh, we'll bring you back when we've basically got that full. All right, so we have our first round in the press. So this is our apple press or fruit press. We use this for a lot, including the uh, extracting the uh, liquid out of the, the sorghum. Now, I will say up front, this is not necessarily the most efficient way to do it, but if you're doing it on a small scale, this will work and it'll actually work quite well. So the one thing with the sorghum is it certainly doesn't press as easily as the apples do. Uh, it takes a lot more blocks and a lot more pressure. So Chris is going to work this. As you can see, it's going down, 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 and nothing is coming out the spigot yet. Where our apples, you don't even have to press them and there's already juice coming out. So definitely a little bit more work involved with these. Still nothing yet. But we promise, what you do get is super concentrated. Well, as you can see, Chris has pushed that down pretty far and it's still got further to go, but the liquid is finally coming. Yummy green liquid. Once you hit that magic point though, it really goes. And then you got to kind of let it release some of the juices and then press some more. Here comes another one. Well, we are back in the house and you can see our, pardon the shadow, but our wonderful green looking liquid that's come off our sorghum. What we're going to do next is strain this because there are some little bits in there just from the pressing process, we'll get those out. So kind of some food for thought here. In 2021 when we did this, we harvested it in sort of early November and the plants were quite brown already. We were actually surprised that they still had quite a bit of sugar content in them because when I chipped them up to make them into fodder, I was amazed that the chips still had a lot of sugar. So we pressed that completely by accident. Well, this year we've harvested it a little bit earlier. And I will be honest, it's a hard topic to find really good information on. But when I got digging around a little bit this afternoon, I did find some uh, some information that suggested that when you cut it back, we probably cut it at the right time, but when you cut it back to strip the leaves off and let the stalks sit for a period of time before you press them. And one thing I did notice on tasting this, it's sweet, but it doesn't seem to be as sweet. Uh, could just be my recollection, but doesn't seem to be as sweet as the syrup from last year. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. But there's definitely some little subtleties to this whole process that uh, once you figure them out, I would say are uh, pretty easy to overcome. But uh, just just some food for thought as we go through this process. Started the sort of boiling down process and we're on a medium heat. And just like maple syrup or any other kind of syrup, we're just cooking it down a bit. Now the nice part about this, the sorghum syrup is it's fairly concentrated to begin with, relatively speaking. So... You just kind of keep bringing this down until we get to kind of a, a light molasses type consistency, I guess, is where we're going with it. But uh, it will sort of start to change color. You can see it's gone from being sort of a bright green to already a little bit of a brownish tinge. As you can see, we are boiled down basically almost there. It's so close. We are getting a pittance of syrup compared to what we've gotten in the previous year. But uh, one thing I wanted to bring up right now is you can see that green sludge that's all on top. Uh, we want to remove that. That's kind of that plant tasting matter, if you will. 
Uh, so basically, I've already kind of removed a little bit as we've been boiling down, but now we're at that point where you can really see it. So I wanted to show you. I basically just use, I've got this nice little round, I guess it's like a little flour sieve type thing. It works perfect for this. I tip to the side because there isn't that much liquid in here. And basically, we're just going to scoop. And you can see how that collects in there. I let what wants to drain out, out. And the rest is going down the drain. And you want to basically remove the most of it, the best you can. I use a, um, I use a spatula and just kind of squish down the sides. Try and get everything in there and remove as much as possible. Because this does have a different taste to the syrup. So it is recommended to remove it. So we're going to do that and we'll keep this cooking down, but we'll bring you back because we're super close to it being that uh, molasses type syrup. You can see as we get that uh, sort of greeny colored foam out, it's really going to kind of a nice dark molasses-y uh, color here. It can go a little bit further, but uh, it is getting very close. At this point, we've made the decision that it is cooked down enough for what we want. You could go a little bit further, but uh, we would prefer it to still be slightly liquid rather than a real thick molasses. This is just judging by our experience last year and how we used it. We're not going to can this this year because I think we pretty much only got one jar. But we're going to pour it in and see what we ended up getting out of the uh, sorghum this year. It's a beautiful color this year, though, a nice amber, or well, it's darker than amber, but it's a lot nicer color than what we had last year with our sorghum syrup. Ooh, we're going to get close to a liter, but not quite. So there you have it. About, oh, it's probably around the three quarter mark, maybe if we're lucky, um, but gorgeous and dark. We skimmed most of it off the top. I'm curious to see what settles on that. Maybe we'll have to take a little bit more off, but all in all, still worth the effort, I think. Final thoughts? It tastes a lot better than last year's, I will say that. I think doing it later, for whatever the reason, we got more out of less stocks last year, but it had a stronger, like you say, a planty flavor. Whereas I'm finding you don't like it, you don't love it, but I'm finding it actually pretty uh, mild. I do Sweet think it's mild. way milder this year than what it was last year for sure. Mm -hmm. So, almost candy. We'll do it again or not again? I think so. We just got to figure some things out. And this is a topic that's a little bit trial and error because it's hard to find good information that's not mega production.